What's up everybody? Today we have more Heroes of the Storm action here on Color TV and we have a game on Sky Temple between Team Fancy and Game S2. The first one you probably haven't really heard all that much about them just yet but they are one of those teams that just popped out and suddenly they are winning games. They are taking maps of the really really good teams out there but nobody really knows how good are these guys actually. Is it just a fluke that they were able to win a couple of maps in a tournament or are they really solid and a stable team that is suddenly going to start to make a rise in the European scene. The game that we have here was played during the Open the Nexus tournament and we are on Sky Temple once again. Game is 2 going for an Illidan composition with Abatha in the lineup. Whereas for Team Fancy we have a bit of a different strategy here. They are relying heavily on the Zagara and more an Apocalypse combination with the Zagara and Diablo. So we're going to go into the best of one series right away to try and find out who's going to take it here. The established Gamers 2, the Polish powerhouse or is it going to be the new kid on the block? Is it going to be Team Fancy? All right, everybody, game is on. We have the second round of the Open the Nexus tournament here today. And as you can see, it is Team Fancy versus Gamers 2. Some fancy Heroes of the Storm action on Sky Temple with a Polish team on the left side of the map. ADRD on Abathur. We have Shaihu on ETC, Leo from Korea on Malfurion, Yoa on Illidan, and Nika on Sylvana. So the right side of this Team Fancy, kind of the new team on the block. We don't really know how good they are just yet, but these boys have been around for quite some time. Dev is on Vala, Tung J on Brightwing, Blumby is playing Diablo, Crossbeam is playing Zagara, and Dark Mock is playing Tyranda in this case. So we already have pretty cool setups here. Once again, we see Malfurion over a potential Rhaegar or Uther, both of those heroes were not banned out, so they could have chosen them at any point in the game, but they decided to go for Malfurion. That's one of the things that we see very, very often for Gamers 2 these days. They really like Malfurion. So right now we have Sylvanas again in their lineup, and of course she's extremely strong against the structures, and that's something that we saw in the last game that they played against the Sofa Boys. Actually, the team is called the Sofa Generals, but I feel Sofa Boys is just much better, and it's also a bit shorter, which makes it fit into my overlay better, so we renamed them. Um, yeah, but in this game, Team Fancy, uh, they are going to run it with an Illidan, um, sorry, not with an Illidan, with Diablo and Taranda composition, so it's going to be that roaming duo on the map trying to get the kills in with a quick slam stun into Tyranda stun and Hunter Smart. And in addition to that, they have a potential setup for more an Apocalypse. There's already an attempted kill, but Abathur is immediately there helping out his buddy. So Abathur trying to be efficient. Abatha is probably the most German hero that we have, just thinking about it right now. Like, he's all about efficiency, that bad boy. And I really like that. He, he's like one of those guys that just, it's its all about the results, you know? So he's very, very German. He just doesn't joke around, and that is very German as well. In this case, though, down to the bottom lane, we're currently seeing Tung Jae zoning out Abatha as much as, or Illidan as much as he can. Oh, that stun! Uh-oh, Yova needs to be careful. If that Diablo gets into range, then he might be in a bit of trouble there. But the temples are now taken. Looking at the talents in the meantime, we're having Bala on the side of Team Fancy with a multi-shot build. It's again ETC in trouble. The cow is moving away. And Dart Mock with an attempted stun, but this time ETC is not rushing into that. Down here, Tangji on his right wing is already starting to do his work against Illidan, but Illidan is trying to return the favor. One temple in the middle taken by the team in red. And so far an experience is likely for the Polish team, but really nothing out of the ordinary just yet. We're having the standard build for most of the heroes here. Pressurized glance on level 1 for Abatha, Adrenal Overlord on level 4. And besides that, it is on ETC block. Sometimes we see the scouting drone taken on ETC these days. The talent has become a bit more popular since the latest patch. But not so in this game. Malfurion went also for the protective shield on level 2, which helps to keep Illidan safe in those fights later on. On the side of the opponents, on uh, the side of Team Fancy, we're having also standard builds with Brightwing even going for Bright in this case. So not trying... Like in the last game we actually saw Brightwing go for the scouting drone. Sometimes we see all the extra damage being chosen on him as well, but not so in this game. Soul Feast for Diablo as well as Amplified Healing to help him stay alive as the sole tank in the team makes a lot of sense. We moved away from the double tank meta a long, long time ago. Back in the days it was quite common to see two damage dealers, two tanks and one healer in the lineup. These days the normal thing is that we have one tank, one healer and then uh, yeah, three additional heroes, maybe an additional support, but at least two damage dealers, sometimes even three. 
and uh, every now and then, depending on the teams that play, you will see a double healer comp again, but double tank is not really common any longer. It's very rare that we see that setup. Devis, Dark Mark, and Blumby are starting to go for additional camps, and don't forget that they are wearing on Tung J bribe, so he could go for that. Oh! Illidan goes down! Not even the fast move of Avatar could really help him here. So they steal out the camp, they get the kill, Team Fancy is starting to do work and well I've told you already earlier they are one of those forces to be reckoned with these days they might not be the most I want to say the most like popular team just yet they're not really a flashy team in the sense that they have been around for a long time and won tournaments but they have seen a couple of really good results and they get the and uh, they get the Gara kill so it's a kill for a kill at the end of the day but still a slight lead for them in overall experience and with the mule now chosen on Abatha we are having at least for now Gamers 2 with a great tool to help out against all the damage that Team Fancy is already doing against their structures. A mule has already been picked up by the red team in this case. We're having it on the Tyranda. The mule has been used there. We're having a gust of healing take in the battle momentum on Diablo. And a popular talent these days, Endless Creep, is being taken. So that helps a lot with the vision on the maps. And this is, of course, going to be great if you are trying to just judge where your opponent is positioned. The bot lane, there's where we have Malfury in, and the rotations are very, very slow for all of the players. So nobody really going for that temple just yet. It seems to be more important for them to keep those heroes at bay and keep the experience on the lane up. But now the rotations are slowly starting to happen with Crosby already making sure that with the creep tumors he's going to have all the vision in the world, dropping one of the towers here already. And so far I have to give a bit of a lead to Fancy. They are doing an amazing job here. But we have Sylvanas now rotating down to the bot lane as well. Vala is still holding the mid lane experience for the red team. Here comes Sagara. Needs to be careful. We have them on level 9. But Illidan is on the way now. Creep everywhere. Great for Zagara. Good vision too. And they're getting the shots from the temple. Brightwing could jump down with a phase shift. So far he hasn't done that just yet. There we go. Brightwing moving in. It's a 5 versus... Four for a second, counting Abathur as well. Illidan moved to mid lane for just a few to soak additional experience, and now they're in full force at the bottom lane. Nearly level 10 on the other hand, for Fancy, and they get the kill against Illidan. A really quick snipe with the Hunter's Mark here, very, very well done. And with that, they are close to level 10. We'll get that talent in just a few seconds, and that is, of course, going to make it impossible for gamers to, to win that fight on the temple. Great pressure here by Team Fancy. They're moving in and taking down the fort before the mule can heal that up again, can repair it. Here comes that combo with Apocalypse and more, and they get the kill against ETZ as a result. Really nice combination here from uh, Team Fancy. We've actually seen a lot of teams failing with that more into Apocalypse comp just recently. So it's kind of nice to see that Fancy has the timings down cold for that. We're already having them on level 10 now with Strafe, Apocalypse, more Starfall and Brightwing. Uh, didn't really choose his talent just yet. In this case, could go for the blink kill here if they feel that they need the additional heal. Tyranda can help out with a th uh, 13 talent if they want to go for that. But against an Illidan composition that tries to jump in, you oftentimes also see the Emerald Wind being chosen if you feel that you're under so much pressure that you need to create some space for the rest of your team. So Brightwing is just buying his time here. He doesn't need to make his decision just yet. He can wait a bit longer and we're going to find out soon enough what exactly he's going to go for. But you can really tell that he has both options at this point. For the level 10s on the side of Gamers 2, the Polish team, we are seeing the ultimate evolution on Abathur. We are having a stage dive, of course, on ETC. Very rarely do you see a ETC these days that goes for Mosh Pit, and usually on this map you don't see it at all. Tranquility from Malfurion, Illidan going with the Metamorphosis, and we are having a Wailing Arrow on Sylvanas that went on level 7, of course, for, um, for the follow-through talent with uh, Enduring Growth chosen on uh, Malt Fury. You could see the life seed on level 13 here for him, and then later on the tenacious roots on level 16 if he decides to not go into the heart and focus. With all that creep spread on the map, by the way, it's getting pretty annoying for gamers too to clear that up. They need to invest a lot of mana and cooldowns on their abilities for that, but the vision that is granted by Zagara in this game is absolutely insane. There's the Emerald Wind for the reasons mentioned earlier. If you then need to see jump your backline, you want to have one tool available to you to make sure that you can push them away and create some space for the rest of your team. So they forego the extra healing and that will probably result in uh, Taranda picking up the 13 talent for the extra heals. At least that would make a lot of sense here if Taranda helps out to compensate a bit for the blink heal that they had to sacrifice to get the Emerald Wind into play. Right now we're having uh, level 12, nearly 13 for Team Fancy. They have that lead with 3 kills against 1. 
and Gamers 2 needs to somehow come back in this game, and it's not easy. One of the main reasons why Brightwing was chosen is that he can act as a counterpart to uh, ETC, who has that mobility on the map. The teams are splitting up the temples now, and we're having the top temple taken by Team Fancy, and that means that uh, this particular fort is going to have a tough time. ADRD could and should go for a mule pretty soon. At this point, he doesn't have the cooldown ready for that, though. Another six seconds until that's the case. And just look at this top lane. Look at that creep spread that we see here. That just gives Crosby such a nice advantage and of course also a lot of vision to the team. The same is true throughout the entire map all the way down to the bottom here. Creep everywhere. That gives you vision at the camps. They're having Tangje moving in against Shaihu, but he needs to be careful since Abatha is helping uh, the cow out. But yep, 100% beef has to move away because at this point EDC is already pretty low. The he fought in the mid lane, also destroyed. Abatha apparently a bit slow on his mule, didn't use that in the mid lane, so no chance to really heal that out. We're having the attack against Tangje down here, and oh, is he gonna get in? Emerald Wind already being used. Yorba is trying again, but Illidan gets dropped. There are too many heroes for Team Fancy there, and they're trying to go for another kill. Leo from Korea is in trouble, using his tranquility, getting shielded by Abatha. Still able to get away, at least for now, but Darmok might have another stun in a few seconds, and Illidan is not with them. Here comes the apocalypse. The more later trying to just lock him down once again, allowing the rest of the team to reposition themselves and they kill against Malfurion, no but Diablo dies too. The problem of course still being that Diablo with all the souls that he still had is back in just a few seconds. Frostshot chosen for Vala on level 13, getting that talent in to give them a bit more control to young the fights and slow, especially the melee characters down. Double sprint on a Brightwing and also on Tyranda, not going for the extra heal here. They feel that they don't really need it, and I have to agree, considering how the fights went the last few times that they clashed with their opponents here. The Polish team is also on the 13 talent, but they are struggling a bit. Abatha went for the Soma Transference on level 13. We're having with ETC picking up Relentless, another tool for the solo tank to stay alive a bit longer. And that's extremely important considering how much stun we are seeing on the side of their opponent. 5.25 kills against 2 is speaking pretty loud language there. We're having, uh, of course, that 0.25 kills because the Avatar copy was taken out in the last fight. It was a copy on ETC. It was trying to give them a bit more control during the battle with the power slide and the uh, face melt. There's a live scene that we've been talking about as the 13 talent on Malfurion, whereas uh, Illidan had to pick up his defensive talent now too. He didn't go for Giant Killer. He is, yeah, he's actually struggling to stay alive. And Sagawa, I mean, Crosby is just everywhere with this creep spread. This must be so annoying. The vision granted here on this map, and they picked Sagawa first. And I still am not really a believer in uh, Zagara as the first pick, but you can really see how well they play with that hero. It's not only that setup for more into Apocalypse, it's at the same time the vision on the map that is just absolutely incredible. Crosby is doing an amazing job with the hero here and that kind of explains why they really like to go for the first pick in, in this case. A lot of heroes are probably considered stronger by other teams but for them Zagara really really works and it's beautiful to see how the comp works out for them. But you should never count Gamers 2 out, especially at the beginning of the, when they were entering the Heroes of the Storm scene. Back then they were still known as Team Paper. They were kind of famous for falling behind at the earlier stage of the game and then coming back. So you should never really uh, count them out. They are a bit behind, but they are closing in on the level 16 talent that Team Fancy already has. And Fancy is going for the double hunter killer talents on Zagara, of course, for the extra damage. We're seeing uh, Diablo with Imposing Presence taken on level 16. Critterize on a Bright Winger uh, with uh, the Blood for Blood picked up on Val. And we're having the True Shot Aura on Tyranda, but now also the 16 talents for their opponents. And here comes the Avatar copy. They're going for the Blood for Blood. They have two Blood for Bloods, one on Illidan, one on Sylvanas. They're starting to move in. Tenacious Roots is there as well. Uh, the jump with ETC is trying to go in and they're going for Zagara. At least they're trying to. Zagara is getting jumped by everybody and down she goes. Immediately Metamorphosis is being chosen. Apocalypse helping out and the kill against Illidan as a result since nobody could really assist him. Leo was too far away. Illidan jumping in but that Apocalypse hitting too many of them. Very well done by Fancy. They lost Zagara but they were able to disengage. And right now it's still the attempt to take down their creep threat. The vision on the map is insane. It's crazy. It's really crazy. 
And I mean, looking at numbers here, we can also tell that Zagara is doing a pretty decent job when it comes down to at least the siege damage. In terms of hero damage, he's only on 13,000. That's not really something to write home about. Bala is doing a much better job there, and I mean, we're not even talking about Sylvanas in this case. Oh, not again! Are they again gonna get that camp? Diablo is moving in, they're fighting for it, but even with Abathon and not winning the fight, the camp is stolen once more. If I was Game as 2, I would be very, very pissed right now because that was the second time that they lost the Siege Giants to their opponents. And now it looks like we are... This is actually a, a ballsy move. I mean, yes, you are in a 5 versus 4 situation, but it's still even talents. But I guess with 5 versus 4 on EPC not going to be back for another 30 seconds, he can go for the boss. If he would have been back in 1 or 2, then it's a bit more tricky since he can just jump in with another stage type, but he doesn't even have that heroic ability ready. It's still 11 seconds down, and now the boss moving in, that's of course great. 7.25 kills against 3, and at this point, I have to say, Gamers 2 is starting to struggle. I mean, Team Fancy has been controlling this match so far with a great map control thanks to Zagara. Good combinations also with more Apocalypse, and not to say that uh, Tyrande didn't really help out with her, with her own talents here. She made sure that all of those stuns were worth it, thanks to the Hunter's Mark, thanks to her Luna Flare, and she's getting it in again. At the same time, the wall is now gone, Brightwing is moving up to the top lane to secure that temple that just activated. And for Gamers 2, it just feels like they don't really get the setup in the fights that they want. Yova is jumping in, he's always going in deep, but the problem for him is that his support is usually stunned out, silenced, or just can't really help him. And then Illidan is just helpless, he's helpless. And this is the the big problem with Illidan. He's oftentimes a sitting duck if he doesn't get any support, which is one of the main reasons why for like a long time he was coupled with heroes like yeah, Rhaegar for the burst heal with the ancestral healing, having that shield as well, and then of course also now in the new patch, Uther with the divine shield. Again, the attempted sun this time, Taranda missing her Luna Flare. Shaihu is in position right now. They're trying to move in. He's jumping and slowing them down, and they're going straight for it. Starfall has been used. Shaihu is nearly dead. Apocalypse being used and ETC is down going for Diablo not the smartest move here with this imposing presence Silvana is now dying as well oh god they kill against Malfurion this looks like a team wipe Yorwa dies on Illidan and only Abathur is still alive level 20 talents are coming into play right now and this is Team Fancy on their way to victory they are looking super strong here Abathur is the only one well, it's time to go for the slap of the ages, my friend. If not for that, they might even lose the game here. The keep is already about to be gone, and Abathur himself, like, what can he do? We have a double... Oh, Nexus Frenzy taken. One on Tyrande, the other one on Bala. And they're going straight for the damage here, and this is not looking pretty. ETC is still down for another six seconds, and there it is. Nika already left the game. The GG calls arrive, and this is Fancy taking out Gamers 2 here at the Open the Nexus tournament. A great game on Sky Temple. Team Fancy with a victory against Gamers 2. Going into that tournament, the Polish team was one of the favorite to take that, but Team Fancy here in the best of one series able to take them down on Sky Temple. And really cool game at that. You could really see how especially Zagara with all that vision on the map was helping them a lot, especially with the control here. And Zagara in general is becoming a bit more popular these days. So Gamers 2 unfortunately for them not able to make it into the next round, but for Team Fancy just another step to really establish themselves in the European scene. An interesting game at that and of course we're going to follow them through the tournament. I hope that you boys enjoyed the game. If you did, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And we're going to see you guys soon again here on Color TV with more Heroes of the Storm action.